As I said in my last one as well, I've reviewed pretty much 90% of these fragrances. If you care to see an in-depth review of any of them, all you need to do is just go to my homepage and search the name of it and you shall find. I just dropped two of these on the bed as I, my shelf, my perfumes are, is above my bed. So I have to be very careful when getting them down. And I tried to take too many a minute ago because I'm just being lazy and I don't want to go back and forth. And uh, two fell out of my arms and luckily didn't land on top of each other because they could have been gone. The two that almost died? Versace Crystal Noir by Versace. I actually bought this because one of you guys told me about this one. I, it's another one that I have walked past so many times and never thought to pick up and smell and I am glad that someone told me about this because it's become just a really good one. I really like it. In terms of the way it performs, it's it's really, really good. It, it lasts such a long time. It's really strong. It's a gardenia coconut combination. And um, yeah, it, uh, it's just very clean and it's just very strong. This is the Eau de Parfum version and it's the 90ml one. It's the biggest one you can get. The other one, keeping in theme of gardenia that almost died, is Narciso by Narciso Rodriguez. I love the amount of glass on this bottle. It's like a trophy. I don't know, it's just very, very heavy and big. And this fragrance drives me mad. It splits me down the middle. Sometimes I'm in love with it, sometimes I don't understand it. But 90% of the time I really like it. It's another gardenia fragrance, but it's got a lot of musk in it. It's very clean. I bought that when I went to the south of France last year. Um, Impulse, I bought it and I loved it. So the next one is uh, Ely Saab Le Parfum. It's the Eau de Parfum version of it. I got this for my best friend for her wedding um, because I know that she would have loved it after, well, I owned it first and I thought this would be perfect for her and it's really beautiful. It's an orange blossom fragrance. The bottle is lovely. It just kind of glistens. I really like this one. It's so pretty. Uh, it's very clean, really, really good quality as well. It lasts a very long time. I love it. I love all of them, otherwise I wouldn't own them, would I? I said that before. This one I think I got near Christmas. Yeah, I did. This is quite a late purchase in the year. It's Opium Eau de Parfum by Yves Saint Laurent. I've not used a lot of that, as you can tell. This one scares me. Oh, it's like the sun in the corner of the video, beaming down. This one scares me a bit. It's really strong. I love it. I appreciate what it smells like, but it's not an everyday fragrance for me. This is a winter wearing a scarf. It's very rich, very opulent fragrance, and yeah, it scares me. <laughs> this one I consider to be a hidden gem. A lot of people know about it already, but I think there's a lot of people that haven't smelled this that are actually into fragrance. I urge you all to smell it. It's amazing. It's Ultraviolet by Paco Rabanne. Now this one, again, it's another one, it's Oh, I, this one's great, it really is. Look at that, it's so cool. Um, it's a violet fragrance, but it's it's really modernized. It's it's quite powdery and clean. It's got some unusual notes in there. It's got, I think it's got chili in it, or maybe capsicum pepper. So there's a, there's a slightly vegetal note going on in the opening. And again, this is a huge, this one, well, this one's a huge compliment getter. Huge, people always wanna know what that is. I love that one. Really strange bottle, it sprays like that. You have to squeeze the whole thing, that's made out of rubber. So, yeah. So this one, I've said this a million times before and I will say it again. If you wanted, have ever wanted to try Midnight Poison and you can't, because it's gone now, or you like Midnight Poison and are looking for something similar, try this fragrance out. It's L by YSL, Yves Saint Laurent again. That there's, they don't, they do smell similar. That there's definitely the DNA of Midnight Poison in this fragrance. It's definitely in there. It's the rose patchouli combination that makes them smell the same. And this one's still around, so you can get it still. And uh, yeah, if you if you long for Midnight Poison but you can't buy it anymore, just give that one a go because you might like it. You might. Next one. It's a good old, big old men's fragrance. 212 by Carolina Herrera. I've always loved this. It's my favorite fragrance on a man ever. It's, it's so incredibly sexy. 
it's like it's got pheromones in it or something, I don't know, it just drives me a little bit crazy even when I wear it, <laughs> I love it. Uh, and I really wish that I could get the, the older version, I used to have it, this is the new formula and it doesn't perform nearly as much, not even close. Where are we going? Oh, okay, we're turning back the clocks a little bit. We're going to Ivresse by Yves Saint Laurent again. Used to be called Champagne. Amazing fragrance. It's so different from everything ever, ever made. It used to be called Champagne, like I said. It's, oh, I don't even know. It smells like black currants to me, but honey, golden black currants. Um, really opulent, smells really sweet and fu I don't know, not fun. It's just very unusual, not a lot of fragrances smell like this and I wish they just would keep it forever. I've, I've heard that, that one might be discontinued, I'm not sure, but we'll see. Okay, then another 90s fragrance, it might have been 89 actually, no it's 90s, Eternity by Calvin Klein. Do I need to say anything about that? Not really. It's full of carnations, it's a quite heavy, sharp, clean floral. Uh, not everyone likes that one, it can be a little bit headache inducing, but I love it, it's, it's just clean and nice. So. Running out of words, I really am. Another Calvin Klein one is Euphoria. Um, I think it's his best fragrance he's ever made. Um, I've never smelled his, his older fragrances. Uh, there is a few like, really older ones that I'd love to smell, but for me, this is my favourite one. I always find it really hard to describe it. It's, oh, I can't even remember what I said in my review. Go and watch the review and you'll see, okay? <laughs> and then the last one in this little bunch is Dolce & Gabbana, The One. Love it. Oh, it's really sweet, vanilla -y, just, oh, that one's tough to describe as well. Look, this is another one, the lid, you just can't get it clean, whatever you do. I sit there sometimes and try and clean it and it just always has marks on it. Anyway, Dingy, The One. So, there's a little bunch left before the, before the next bunch, which are going to be my niche fragrances. So, I'll show you my, my little small niche collection in a minute. Uh, so, let me just go and try and not drop any more bottles, because that would be disastrous. No okay. uh, tree. There was a couple of ones I actually forgot that I were next to the ones I should have took down a minute ago, that I'll quickly show you. Uh, one of them is La Jante by Argent Provocateur. This is another true hidden gem this fragrance really really good i mean in terms of again projection and quality and longevity go and watch my review it's really really good this one is so affordable now as well the bottle is really cool it's kind of pearlescent looking this is a gorgeous leather um incense resinous myrrh kind of fragrance that's quite heavy and dark but it's, it just works so well, it's really sexy as well, and um, yeah, it's got this little thing that needs a clean on it. Uh, yeah, it's quite heavy and quite bolshy, um, yeah, Argent Provocateur makes some really great fragrances, and that one is, to me, brilliant. What was the other one that I missed that was not a niche fragrance? <laughs> this is just a staple in my collection, I always have this. It's surprisingly one of my biggest compliment getters as well. I always have it. This is the 200ml bottle. It's giant. And yeah, I, I wore this today actually before I had a shower. I just... It's just very clean. It's got white musk in it. I don't know. CKB, it's quite... Everything's a little bit uh, hot today. So anyway, that's them two. So I'm going to show you my, I guess, higher end fragrances now. I've spent a lot of this year really just, I've only really p purchased niche fragrances this year, only a few other ones I haven't that, that have been designer or, you know, more high street fragrances, but I have spent a lot of time this year just getting stuff that's a little bit more expensive, but stuff that I know that I've smelled and fallen in love with, so this is them. I'll start with Tom Ford, is, I'm going to start with Tom Ford because it's a debate whether he's niche or designer. I mean, I know he's a designer, but his fragrance seemed to be, seemed to come off as niche. I don't know, so I'll start with them. So, Black Orchid, obviously. How can you not have Black Orchid in your collection? Everything's so dirty, it's annoying me. Um, yeah, great fragrance. The more I wear this fragrance, the more I'm absolutely in love with it. It's really heavy fragrance. I, I really tend to go for heavy fragrances. They're my, they're my favorites. 
the real bolshy complex type. Um, that one, yeah, chocolate. It's got a lot going on in there. Vetiver. It's very dry, chocolatey, dark, vampiric, vampiric kind of fragrance. Love it. Uh, I also got Sahara Noir. That was at the end of last year. That one's great. It smells like church incense. It's it's very realistic and it's not the most pleasant fragrance, but it's it's absolutely beautiful and it's again it's that one to me is quite a a statement fragrance it's not something that I would wear every day and then this one that I got by Tom Ford has actually gone into my top 10 fragrances ever I adore this fragrance white patchouli is everything oh this is everything I mean it's so weird it's well at the beginning it smells a little bit like paint which is strange but when it starts to settle it's a very complex floral it doesn't really smell like patchouli at all really it, it's just gorgeous. It's, it's very complicated and hard to explain on, in a quick video like this or a quick run run over of this. But yeah, that one is that one's very special. I love it. So the next one doesn't stand up at all. It's Comme de Garçon. Hi, can you see me waving? Hi. Uh, yeah, look at that. I need to clean it, don't I? Hey, camera. So yeah, that one's lovely. It's kind of metallic, strange fragrance. Um, a friend of mine wears this and that's why I got it. I've smelled it on him a few times and just really, every time he's worn it, I've thought, wow, that smells great. So it's called Two. You can kind of see the two there. Really unusual. Nothing ever that I've smelled has smelled like that. And that's why I got it. It's very, very different. I like to have something that's a bit unique. If I'm gonna get something special. So, the next two are by the house of Amouage. I love Amouage. I'm gonna end up having so many more of them in my collection, I can tell. And yeah, they just, yeah, I need to discover a lot more of their fragrances, but so far I've found quite a few that I absolutely love. This one's Lyric. It's a rose, it's like a powdery rose fragrance. It just smells really high class. I don't know, it's just lovely. And it's got the little jewel on the top there. I really like it. And then this one I got for Christmas. Uh, this is my most recent review that I did. Um, well, my most recent review of a bottle that I own. This is this is the one. It's called Opus Nine. It's got glitter in the glass. This one is really really crazy. It's it's very daring. It's like peppery. Uh, it's got this pepper. It's got jasmine in it. It's got a lot of woods in there as well. And it's a bit animalic from Civet. Yeah, that one's called Opus Nine. I love that one and it's quite hard to stand up because it's a very th thin bottle but that is really really gorgeous. What else have I got? So this one, next one is probably hands down my biggest compliment getter ever in terms of niche fragrances I own. It's L'Air du Désert Marocain, if you, if you can see that. It's really hard to read, uh, it's pronounced, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, this one is super special. It's dry, it's got things like caraway and cardamom and spices in it. It's based on Moroccan desert air in it. It really just does, it smells amazing and it also needs a clean. That one's great, that one, if you read reviews of that one, you will want to buy it. So be careful, because once you read the reviews, you will probably, gonna want to buy it and it's quite expensive it's it's a hundred pounds for 50 mil and it only comes in 50 mil so but it's brilliant I mean it lasts forever so what else? the next one is my most controversial fragrance I own it's the one that divides crowds uh, people either are repulsed by it or they love it and it works amazing with my chemistry it's MM Inc by Byredo it's very unusual. It's based around ink, um, or Indian ink, I think. It smells very animalic. It's got a very barnyardy, weird kind of smell. But it also has something in it that's called ambroxan, which makes it smell very clean, like washing. And it, it works amazingly on my skin. So if you use this in the right way, I mean, my review of it is, is quite cool. I mean, you have to really use it properly and really let it settle it's not going to be an instant love but if you can feel the magic of this one it is it is just, it's just great i love that one 
a whole lot. So the next two are two quite prized possessions in my collection. I mean, I, I look at these ones and I just flutter my eyelashes and just tell them how much I love them all the time. These, Carnal Flower by Frederick Mao and Portrait of a Lady, Frederick Mao. The perfumer behind them, as you can see, is Dominique Robion. He made both of these fragrances and they are both amazing. This one in particular, this is an incense -y rose fragrance, very dry, um, just smells a little bit churchy, but rough as well. It's, it's, uh, oh, I don't know, that one is just, it's a lot. Go and look up this one if you've never heard of it before. Go look at my review. A lot of people have a lot of good things to say about it. And then Carnal Flower is all about tuberose. They have put a lot of stuff in here to really replicate the true smell of tuberose, which is my favorite flower, which is why I bought this. It's got a kind of coconutty element, it's got eucalyptus in it, it's a white floral that's really rich and golden and summery, and it's very, very special to me. I love it. I bought these in almost one by one, as opposed to the other ones where I almost dropped them. These ones came in on little chairs on their own with fireworks. Ah. So the next one is by Fragonard. I bought this when I went to Grasse last year. It's huge. <laughs> it's a 200ml bottle. I bought this. I'm going to get more of their fragrances as well. They're really affordable. Um, this one is called Rêve Indien, which means Indian Dream. It smells like Shalimar by Guerlain. It smells really nice. It's ambery. It's vanilla. Uh, it's not as animalic or citrusy as Shalimar. But it's really nice, it, and you can just lavish yourself with it because it's only they're only like thirty something pounds, thirty four pounds, thirty nine pounds maybe, and it's huge. I'm gonna get more of this when I go back in August. This one again was an almost impulse buy. I bought it two days after I smelled it because it was so beautiful. It's Citizen Queen by Juliet Has a Gun. It's so nice. It's an iris fragrance. It's got, it's very soft. It's got a very soft leather in it as well. This is absolutely stunning, this fragrance. It really, really is. I, whenever I smell it, I, I kind of swoon and wish that I had more of it. I feel like I need to get another one just in case it ever goes away. It's, look at that. It's so nice. Lovely detail on there. I, I just really like it. It's like a mirror. Really, really beautiful. I urge you all to smell it. If you can ever find it, it's it, yeah, you'll be able to find it. It's fine. This one I've used quite a lot of. It's Dusson by Diptyque. This is another tuberose fragrance. It's pretty much straight up tuberose. It's not really uh, any more complicated than that. Uh, the ones I showed you at the beginning, you know, I had the two from Grass. The one I said, the ones I said, oh, they're quite natural. There was orange blossom and tuberose. I sprayed the tuberose one with this side by side, and you know what? There wasn't really much difference. Only that Diptyque charge you a whole lot more money. <laughs> so I was a bit bummed about that, but I love the back of the bottle more than anything. It's so nice, but it's pretty much straight up tuberose. It's very untouched and quite pure. I love it. So there's only a few left of this little collection. Um, the next one I've not even worn yet. I've bought it and I've not worn it because I bought it in summer and it's really more wintry. It's Shergi. Shergi by Serge Luton's. This one's really warm, spicy, as you can tell from it, it's it's almost like wine. It's very rich and I think it's got like raisins in it or something weird like that. It's, it's very deep and it's it smells a little bit quite masculine to me actually, more than uh, it should. But yeah, I, I've not even worn that yet. I mean, I've tried it obviously, but I just haven't worn that one. So I, I like that one. That's cool. This one is nearly gone because a certain someone keeps using it all the time. It's Nymphio Mio by Annette Guttal. Beautiful fig fragrance, lots of citrus, very green, and works perfectly in hot weather. I'm obsessed with it, I love the bottle, it looks so kitschy and vintagey. Um, I just, I love it, it's so beautiful. And look, most of it, well, a lot of it's gone. And let me tell you, I haven't worn it that many times, but it does spray quite a bit of fragrance out. It's like, it, whew, you can actually hear it, it's quite a lot. But yeah, if you like fig leaf and greenery, go for that one. It's really, really cool. Oh, there's only a few left. 
This one is by Molinard. I got this one in the south of France as well. It's called Nirmala. Weird name. I know. I don't know what it means. I still don't know what this word means. Someone please tell me. This one smells a little bit like Angel by Terry Mugler. Um, except it hasn't got the gourmand notes going on. It's like the fruitier side of Angel. I really like it. It was really affordable. It was £20. And uh, I really enjoy wearing that one. But I don't wear it too much. Too much. Got this one. I'm not sure if you can call lust niche, but uh, lush, sorry, niche, but I th I think they are. I think lush are quite niche when it comes to perfumery. Uh, this one's called Lust. It's the strongest jasmine fragrance I've ever owned. I mean, it's seriously strong, it's almost nuclear. Really, really dirty and unforgiving, and um, it reminds me of like vampires as well. I don't know why. And then Second to last is Sandalwood Cologne by GRF Trumper. A lot of people won't know what this is. They're a British brand. They're actually a kind of barber shop in central London and they, they've got a lot of fragrances. This is such an underrated beauty. It's amazing. It's It's got a very kind of tart heart to it, but with a, a very unusual sandalwood tone. It's sandalwood, but it it's, doesn't smell like sandalwood, really, to me. It's, I don't know, it's a, it's a tough one to describe. I've reviewed it anyway, if you care to go and watch. And then lastly, of this little bunch, is one that you guys can't buy, unfortunately, because I made it. It's mine. <laughs> it's Fawn. I made this when I went to Grass, and I've also reviewed this fragrance. It was such a fun experience. Um, yeah, I, I made it very green. It's got fig in it, it's got tobacco, it's got aldehydes. It's got jasmine and it's got a lot of cool stuff in it that I really love. And I also bought the shower gel and cream to match. So that's my little one. I love it. Anyway, there's only a few more left. We're just gonna, I'm just gonna show you, I'm, uh, I'm going to show you my backups, I think. I'm not gonna show you my samples because it's, it's long and boring and I've got loads of them. They're just samples. <laughs> so yeah, I'll show you a couple of things that are hidden in drawers and then that's gonna be the end. So I'll see you in a minute. A little bit. So these bits, these are things that are in boxes or um, just, yeah. They're, they're backups or they're things that are in boxes that are waiting to come out. Most of them are backups basically with a few little things, other things thrown in. So the first little sad sorry case is this one. Aww. Michael Kors, one of my favourite fragrances ever. The reason it looks like this is because I bought it and if any of you guys own this fragrance, you will know, or if you've bought it a few times more than once, you'll know that it's, the sprayers are usually really bad and this particular one, when I used it, I would spray it and the, all of the perfume would just flow down the back of the bottle and I would not get any of it on me. So I've taken the whole lid off and I now use a little atomizer pump thing that I take around with me. So yeah, it's a shame, but that's, that's how it goes. So. These two, oh gosh, these are very special to me. One of them is, well both of them are actually, <laughs> Samsara, my favourite fragrance ever. This is the Vintage Eau de Toilette, it's a 50ml, just leagues and leagues above the one that's released now. There's, it's still beautiful, I mean the new one now is still beautiful, but this one to me is, it's just so much better. Oh. And then the other one is, again, Samsara, vintage, but it's the Eau de Parfum version. And just in case you guys ever wanted to find it, this is the difference between the bottles. This is what vintage Samsara looks like. Take note. <laughs> that's the Eau de Toilette and that's the Eau de Parfum. They come in glass, clear glass bottles. The new ones come in red, so... There are some that are older, actually, uh, that I'm not really sure how they look, but... These are like the 90s version ones, they're, they're just so good. And then another little Samsara cutie thing that I have is this. It's the Pure Parfum. It's only a tiny little two mil bottle of it, but it's the Pure Parfum of Samsara. So it's one of those ones where you just kind of just need a little tiny bit. I've hardly even touched that or looked at it. I don't even know, I just, I got it. And so yeah, there it is. So a lot of these now are just backups. So I'll start with the craziest ones. <laughs> so I'll start with the one that I have probably the most of. Uh, it's Dolce & Gabbana Red Cap. 
So I get, yeah, 100ml one there. I just, when something's discontinued and you really, really love a fragrance, you really just, I don't know, why would you not want to buy loads of it? You know? So, uh, yeah, I just, I kind of did and I, I bought quite a few of them. <laughs> Those are all 100ml ones and that's a 50 and then I also found Parfum de Toilette which is an unusual concentration of fragrance. You don't normally see that, it's in between, just for the record, it's in between Eau de Toilette and Eau de Parfum. So it's mm, a little bit more, a little bit more strong I guess. And then I found, oh, I found the original Italian formulation of it which is the older one. You can see the difference immediately, it's because it's got the black. Uh, thing there that is that's the thing that shows you that it's the older formulation so that is my tower of dingy red cap when I look at it like that it makes me scared so like I said before I have a backup of the Victoria's Secret very sexy heart I'm kind of going off of it so I might sell this I'm not sure I don't know yet it's oh it's upside down whoop there you go so there's only a few left um, backup I have of Shalimar Parfum Initial. I showed you it already. It's it's just a really good fragrance. So and it's discontinued as well. So why not get another one? It's so beautiful. Look at that. Half the time I just it's just to look at them. They're just they're so beautiful. I love them. Uh, and then yeah, I have another backup of like I said before of the original Shalimar also, which is again beautiful looking. It's that's a big one. <laughs> I love it. It's so beautiful. I love them. So then, this one's not open at all. It's a backup of the Angel Liqueur by Tome Mugler. I don't need to open that because I'm already using the other one. So that's fine. I'll keep that how it is. And then the last couple, I have a bottle of Vintage Lulu. I use my other Lulu and this is the Vintage one. Crazy fragrance that I really find difficult to wear, but I mean, it's such an ugly bottle to me as well. It's so disgusting, it's so horrible. It looks like a strange doctor's tool that just, I, I don't even know what that is, but it, I don't like it. I like the smell inside of it though. And then the last two are another one, uh, another one by Cacharel, it's Eden. I'll use this one, this is the newer formulation, but I also found a bottle, oops, of the vintage formula. The difference between them, just for the record, can you see the elliptical around the, the label? That's how you know, if you ever find them on eBay, that's how you know that you are going to find the older formula. That is very, very different. Not very different, but it's much stronger. Um, yeah, and basically that, that's them. I could show you my samples, which I won't because samples are samples, they just look like little vials of stuff. But um, yeah, that's it. It's an updated collection video from 2016. Until then, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. I'll see you guys soon, anyway. I'm out someone O, click my logo to subscribe, and I'll see you guys soon for another review. Goodbye.